Hello and welcome to my video Important Heroes for the Campaign So in this video I like to show you um, the heroes I think with, uh, with which you can finish the campaign uh, with teams below 400,000 power points So if I um, was to restart playing Hero Wars then I would try to go for the following team uh, as a tank, we uh, I would definitely go for Siri. She is by far the best tank for the campaign. Uh, then uh, I would go for Kark. He's very strong and his ability to take out opponents that, a bit, that are a bit farther back in the uh, opposing lineup is very helpful. And then to go with this team, I will play Sky and faceless and in last position I would go for Marta. Now those are the five heroes I would concentrate on. Uh, Kai is very good together with Kark because his first skill Feathers of the Wind will lift up all the um, enemies, all the enemy uh, uh, characters and then Kark will attack with his third skill with the deadly tendrils and faceless if he copies sky um, I mean in the campaign you control can control the ultimate so you can uh, make sure that you copy Kai with faceless so again all the the opponents will be lifted up and uh, Kark will attack again and Marta in last position yeah, you can also you can also play with Lian uh, in the campaign. She would also be very good for for the campaign in last position. But the final boss in chapter 15, Seymour, when you want to beat him with a team below 400 kilo, then you need Marta. She is just indispensable indispensable then because with her first skill, she will increase the speed of your troop. Um, I can show you Marta, where is she? Mm, four Mother's Oath, you see increase all allies speed by 250% for 6 seconds. And then when you have Faceless in the same team, you just copy her with Faceless and uh, copied ability gains level 260, he will uh, again uh, add a tremendous amount of speed to your heroes and that's necessary uh, in order to beat Seymour because like that you will be quick enough to uh, destroy the two outposts he's producing and when they are destroyed the spheres uh, Seymour is using are used against him and when you are too slow and you don't manage to destroy these outposts he is uh, creating time and time again, then you simply don't stand a chance of beating him. So Marta and Faceless are really the key to beat Seymour with a team that uh, is below 400 kilo in total uh, power. But also Marta is, uh, is a very solid hero, she is a good healer and uh, she has also an interesting first artifact. I mean she is using a first artifact, she has armor and this is uh, coming in very handy uh, uh, on various occasions against Kornak, the boss in level in chapter 14. It's very good to have uh, um, a healer in last position with uh, armor. So yeah, of course I know when you are just starting out, it is impossible to go right away for those heroes. So until you can go for them, I would just go with, uh, uh, well me personally, I would try to, to go for Aurora very early on. Uh, Jorgen, you will need him later. You don't really need Jorgen for the campaign, but you need him in Arena and Guild Wars because against mage teams, a strong mage team uh, with the twins, he's really indispensable. Um, Jorgen, and then I will go with Faceless uh, and Phobos and Thea. Mm. Also, 
maybe bring her up as a second tank. Um, Galahad, in the beginning, the first character you get, if I remember correctly, is Galahad. And he is very strong, he was also upgraded a bit. He, his first skill got uh, very strong now, is a very good attacker. So this would be the line I would start out with. Because with those um, guys you can also finish the tower right from the start every day. You can finish it every day and I will show in another video I uh, just uploaded this and uh, I will give you the link in the description so you can see how you can finish the tower with them. And then, uh, yeah, as times, time goes on, uh, I would gradually try to replace them or uh, bring additional heroes. So um, then you, at some point, you bring in Siri, and uh, instead of Kai, then you bring in Kai. And of course, you need a uh, Karki. He needs really to be your superhero in the squad. And yeah, I don't know, at some point there will be an event and then you, when you have a chance to get Marta, I really would go for her. She's uh, an amazing character. I don't yet know too many uh, details about her, but uh, what I have seen of her is really amazing. This speed skill is really good. Uh, so I want to show you how these characters play out in the campaign and then we have to add some more heroes, I will come to that later. And also in Arena and Guild Wars, uh, there are some more heroes are required because otherwise you will have a hard time. Uh, this very line in Arena is not bad, but as soon as you face a good team with the twins, uh, you will have difficulties, uh, but we will come to that later. Now, first, let's see how they, uh, they manage uh, to play the campaign. Before we go on, I have to say that my Siri, I ne neglected her a little bit. Uh, her first artifact, especially, is not a really great armor boost, only 1854. So, she's not my strongest tank at the moment. Mm, so, I still try with her, but. Uh, it really makes sense to, to make her your uh, first tank, especially when your main aim is to finish the campaign. Um, when you want to be very good in arena, maybe you will need another tank, but we come to that later. So, let's go to the campaign and I will demonstrate you this in uh, one of the advanced chapters. Let's go uh, for chapter 15, 14 and here we have the Path of Madness. Ah, and also I can't use Marta because, <laughs> yeah, she was introduced only some months ago and I did not really have the time to go for her. So I will use, instead of Marta, I will use the character with uh, some similar ab uh, abilities and I will use Chet because my Chet uh, is really ready uh, and he has certain similarities with Marta. His first artifact is also armor, and you can see I maxed this. So when he's using his first skill, you know, I get, we will get 32 kilo armor, additional armor. And yeah, if you go for Marta, you just have the same. So whenever I'm using Chet, you just would uh, uh, use Marta in that place. So Path of Madness, Siri. Um, and then we have Kark, Faceless Kai, and Jet. And you will see this is just too strong a line. Uh, I mean, here we have a heavy opposition. This priest of Seymour is really a very sophisticated healer. And uh, the drilling installation is annoying because uh, it's preventing the, the two heroes in front from uh, using their first skill. You see it's destroying the energy bar all of the time. So here we just have to wait till Kai and Faceless are ready. Maybe also Jet because he's increasing the attack. Uh, use first Jet now that we use him, making Kark a bit bigger and more attacking. And now Kai followed by Faceless. And you see what's happening to the Priest of Seymour. He just got knocked out. 
I have to add, uh, Chad's force skill now also helps a little bit because uh, he increases the critical hit chance for uh, all allies and this of course helps a little bit. But I think the same works just fine also with Marta. You see Siri is suffering a bit. Her armor is... Uh, I hope she survives. Uh, using Kark right away before the drilling installation can take away anything. And now again Kai followed by Faceless and uh, yeah this is uh, very very damaging now this first guy is not really dead yet uh, maybe he's coming back yeah he's coming back but I think we'll have no problem as long as Siri is not dying dive Siri dive 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 that's why she's the best tank for the campaign, because she has the ability to recover her health. She's the, she's the only tank. Okay, Galahad. Uh, okay, wait. Kark's okay. <laughs> Kark took care of, of everything now. Uh, okay, Siri, first skill. And uh, now, Chet. And then we go again to Kai, faceless. Okay, no one fell yet, but the Priest of Seymour has some healing to do now. And I'm pretty confident that we will pass this level pretty soon. Maybe I can go for Kark. Come on, Kark. No drilling installation. Uh, shame on you, drilling installation. Okay, we use Kark and then we go for Chet. And Kai Faceless, this will complete this level. Or not? Yeah. So you see, that's the. Oh, okay, we can have some fun with the Golem, I think. It's called Golem. Okay, let's go for Kark. Now we have to hit him a couple of times so that he cannot uh, resurrect. Uh, okay, come on, guys, hit him, hit him, hit him. Okay. <laughs> uh, now, uh, now it's all over. So now, when we analyze this, you see the damage dealer is Kark. Usually, deal a lot of damage. So, for normal missions, this is just uh, the killer setup, I would say. Now, when you have a boss mission, then it's a little bit different. Because uh, Kai's Feathers of the Wind cannot lift up bosses, and also uh, Kark's ultimate first skill also is uh, not really working on the bosses. So, there I would switch in Chu. For, uh, here we go to the uh, to the boss of chapter 14 just to illustrate it Kornak here I would switch in uh, Chu for uh, Kai I'm not completely sure that it works because my my Chu is really not that leveled up and also uh, yeah my Siri here I, I have to go for Astaroth because uh, uh, I leveled up his armor stat uh, to the maximum and we really need a good armor here. So let's see. Again, some very interesting characters. I forgot the name of the, this electrical buzzer here. Um, yeah, nasty fellow, but... And now the tactics for Faceless, I would just copy Kark. So use Kark, then copy Kark with Faceless, this will do a lot of damage. So I wait for Faceless, so I can... Yeah, or I don't wait for Faceless. Maybe I should not have waited. Okay, now I use Asteroid, maximum armor, Chet. And now Kark. Kark, yes, we could go one time here. And now we take it slow so that 
Uh, yeah, okay, we take it slow, but Kark uh, doesn't think so. <clears throat> yeah, now it's a bit critical. I just hope that Astaroth can survive. So, Siri would be much better. He would, she would dive. And uh, Kark can hold the line while Siri is diving without any problem. Mm, okay, now. I misplayed it a little bit. I should concentrate more, I think. Okay, now let's go for Kark. Followed by Faceless. And use Kark again. But I fear that Astaroth might die. And that we cannot afford. Yeah, he's not dead, but almost dead. Okay, now here is the boss, Kornak guy. Uh, Chu is very good here. He takes a lot, uh, inflicts a lot of damage. I have to wait. Uh, you would have to wait with Marta, because Kornak he will send out some bomb, and then we need uh, an armor. Unless we can kill this bomb before she explodes. No, he can't. Okay. And the next bomb is already here. Now Astaroth is doing the protection. <clears throat> this is very important that you have the armor. Now Astaroth died. Okay. Uh, no. Okay. Now Faceless has to copy Chu. And otherwise he will die. Okay, Chet died now. Now, as long as Faceless can copy Chu, he will not die. This will be very close. Come on, Chu, load your... Ah, Chu, come on. Yeah, yeah, now very good, very good. We activate Chu and Faceless can copy Chu. I mean, Faceless uh, has a bad copy in a certain sense of Chu because he... Uh, he doesn't throw any boomerangs, but he copies the ability to not uh, to not die. Uh, I thought so at least. There something went wrong. Will we manage to kill the boss? Ooh, this is close. Maybe Kark can finish him off. Only very little health left. Come on, Kark, get him, get him, get him. Yep. Okay, I have to admit that was very close, and the reason why it was so close was that Astaroth uh, was not really ready and died too early. So with the Siri at the same level of my Astaroth, this would uh, just be very comfortable victory. So you see, there has been a little cut in this video as. Uh, the summer festival is uh, already in full swing. Yeah, it's a nice little festival with the uh, with the cute little bees, uh. and we have also new skins. Uh, really nice. Uh, yeah, magic penetration skin for Kai. That of course would be a very nice skin, and also the armor skin for Lian will make her a lot more stronger even stronger than she already is yeah so many skins so little skin stones to level them up skin stones are really hard to get well in this event we have the chance to to get some skin stones and there are also uh, normal uh, skin stones events once a month I think 
The other way to get skin stones is in Outland if you uh, open the, the, the first two caskets for uh, 90 emeralds each. That's uh, a good ratio, emerald investment and skin stones, because uh, you get the, the fourth casket is for free. There you get another 70 skin stones. Yeah, okay, so we had our main team for the campaign. Now, uh, I um, I wasn't able to do the normal missions with Marta yet because uh, she came only into the game a few months ago. So I played the the normal missions in the campaign. I, I played with Lian, and uh, down in in the description I will give you a link to uh, the technical division. Um, I uh, I passed this mission with this exact team, this very team. There were about 300,000 300, when I first passed it, so maybe you want to check this out. But I recommend, still recommend, if you have enough resources, of course you can also bring up Lian, but if you don't have and you really want to concentrate on one line that, uh, that does it all, then Marta is better because as already mentioned, the final boss, Seymour, you really need her together with Faceless. I'm not sure if uh, the top, the, the three uh, heroes in front, I think uh, there you have a lot of possibilities. But uh, yeah, as said, I would go for Siri Kark and uh, for the boss mission I would switch in two. But those three, you can also put other heroes there. The, the trick is uh, to use Marta's first skill and then copy that by Faceless so that your heroes have enough time to destroy these outposts. I also give you the link of the guy who, um, who managed to beat Seymour with, uh, with a line uh, who had about 388 uh, kilo. So I recommend that additionally to those fives you have some substitutes ready. Uh, which uh, you can swap for Kai mostly. So Chu we already mentioned. Um, then another hero that is helpful in this position is Cornelius. He especially helps you in chapter 12 and 13 with the frozen visage and also the uh, the lady playing the harp. I forgot her name. A very nicely designed hero in chapter 13 I think nope here we have her lady minstrel yeah because the, those are uh, very also him they are all very intelligent characters so uh, the monolith of uh, of Cornelius can uh, take them out with one single hit so I suggest you also level him up and also Orion, because he helps you a lot in Outland with the, with the boss and also with some campaign mission. It's really nice to have him and then you can copy him by Faceless. And there is one mission uh, in chapter 15 called the uh, Puff of Estrangement. I also give you the link down in the description. There I, uh, I use Lars, because um, with his storm he can uh, mm, uh, sweep away the, the drilling installation before they manage to uh, uh, dig themselves in into the ground and, and become stable there. So then they are uh, sweeped, uh, swept uh, to, the very, uh, to the very brim of the screen uh, where they don't do uh, that much of damage. <clears throat> so you can also check this out and in this level um, I think if I remember correctly I went with Kai also Lars Faceless and then I was tanking with uh, with Kark and I used uh, Marcus like this. It's a very special mission. We don't really need Marcus. Uh, if you have a good enough Chu then uh, he places behind. 
Yeah, this is a problem. Maybe Jorgen? No? Someone who places in front of... But Marcus isn't necessary, even though in this chapter I played with him. You can find a way to pause it. Yeah, maybe if you have Krista. Krista was in place in front of Kai. This would be, of course, also a, a good way to pass that level. I'm sure you will find a way there. For the meantime, you can just check out this video. Now, one word to Cornelius. Once you have him, Mm, he's really a, a big damage uh, in uh, this can inflict a big damage with his first skill with his monolith and we can make this even a bit worse so um, if we add Elmir Elmir is also a nice guy to go for he will also help you in the arena when you are up against the team with Kark because the clones he's producing are distracting Kark Kark goes for the three heroes with the lowest health with his uh, nexus of horror so when there are some clones or clones around he will just attack them and spare all your other heroes and he's good because he has armor penetration as a first artifact and cornelius monolith we have to uh, take a quick look at this where do we have cornelius um, is heavy wisdom. The damage his monolith is doing depends on how intelligent uh, his uh, uh, um, yeah his target is, the adversary character is. So he does per 100 intelligent points of the target. My Cornelius would do 4,000 damage, and even though Cornelius is a mage, this damage is uh, the number is painted in red. So this means this is physical damage. So the, um, so the armor of the opponent will uh, reduce the damage. So when we use uh, Elmir first, he will lower the armor maybe to zero. And then, of course, the monolith of Cornelius does much more damage. You also see uh, it depends on 10% of magic attack. So it helps when you have a character who is increasing the magic attack as a first artifact. And uh, we can do that with Jorgen, because uh, I will recommend later he should be on your team for Arena. And then once in a while, maybe we can you can use him in, in, uh, in the campaign. I'm just going to demonstrate you this. Um, I saw a video on YouTube where someone is uh, fighting against Cor uh, the, the boss mission in Chapter 14. And he will... Uh, uh, take out the boss Kornog with just one single monolith. So he had a very strong Cornelius and uh, uh, some nice tactic. I cannot show you this in this mission because uh, my Cornelius and my Elmir they are both too weak. But I can show you in this one. Here we have the priest of Seymour. He's also a very intelligent character. So uh, Cornelius monolith will really hurt him. I'll just to demonstrate you this. So we take uh, Siri, and now for once we don't take Kark, we take Elmir, Cornelius, Faceless, and Jorgen. And just to demonstrate you what damage you can do with this combination. <laughs> some interesting heroes here, a golem, I think he's the one who will resurrect if you don't hit him fast after he lost all his life, some, some guard, okay we have to wait a little bit till Cornelius and Faceless are ready, Elmir and Jorgen are ready already, so I use Siri and then we go for Elmir, and we use Jorgen and now let's go for Cornelius and Faceless she can copy him. Now watch it. 2 million damage <laughs> and the monolith of Faceless would have inflicted 3 million damage points. So you see this kind of setup is nice to have, okay? 
appear on the less intelligent characters, it does not have the same effect. Because those guys left, they are not that intelligent. So, yeah, 180,000. Okay, we didn't have the armor penetration now. Yeah, okay, I just wanted to show you this. Now, what do we have? Yeah, for Arena, you should add some additional heroes. Because um, when you go with Siri, Karg, Kai, Faceless, and Marta, uh, our main line for the campaign, in Arena, we'll not do bad with this line. But especially against mage teams, against strong mage teams, maybe uh, playing with the twins, you two twins, uh, this means Lars and Krista, uh, you will have a problem with this line, especially when you don't use Jorgen. So in those line against those lines, I uh, tend to to exchange uh, Kai for Jorgen. And uh, generally speaking, in arena. Uh, Astaroth is doing better than Siri because uh, we have a superstar in our line and this is Kark. Uh, he's the, the, the guy who, pro who inflicts the most damage by far so when he's gone you will really struggle. So once in a while uh, a lightning bolt of Lars can take out Kark with just one single hit and then you lose basically. But when you have Astaroth he will bring Kark back once and this can be decisive. So I suggest if you have the resources you go for a second tank and uh, that would be Astaroth. Jorgen is necessary and yeah Marta is not bad I'm sure I don't have that much experience with her in arena mm, but my feeling is that uh, Chet is better for arena because he's just a better support for uh, for Kark. Um, he has some nice skills I quickly want to show you. Not a lot of people are using Chet because his soul stones are quite hard to get but uh, once you have him he's really a nice supporter for a physical attack line. See his first skill he will increase the physical attack of your um, yeah, of your best character actually, and also heal, and then he can reduce the armor of the opponent, can prevent the opponents from regenerating health, and also this force skill is interesting, he, he gives a critical hit chance to all of your heroes, so uh, Kark uh, does not have a critical hit, um, on his own but once Chet is in his team once in a while he's doing critical hits too and he's already uh, inflicting a lot of damage without the critical hit chance so Chet is really an interesting hero his soul stones are hard to get they are in the soul shop which will open when you have one uh, hero brought one hero to the maximum stars level to six stars then this soul shop is opening and then here you can purchase uh, soul stones quite expensive but yeah it's nice it's a nice hero uh, if you have him also with money you cannot do a lot yeah you can uh, you can click here and then you can buy him again like this but apart from this there is no other way uh, to get him so uh, that's that. Sometimes Lian is the best, the best girl in last position. One has to say. Sometimes she's better than Chet or Marta because um, you can guess maybe when we are up against the line containing Cleaver. Because against her, when Cleaver is using his hook skill, she's uh, Jinxing uh, Cleaver with her fourth skill, which makes uh, Cleaver stop his first skill in mid motion and then uh, he's only very seldom capable of pulling uh, Leon to the front line whereas with Chet and Marta when Cleaver is coming with his hook usually they go uh, right to the front where they die uh, usually very quickly so sometimes uh, Leon is better there 
Um, we were talking about the twins. Um, I also recommended that in some mission in chapter 15, you, Lars is very handy. Of course, you can go for the twins. Lars on his own is nice, but with his sister, twins, they are uh, nice heroes to go for. Uh, if I were to go, I did never, never played with them. They, they are maybe not uh, mandatory for the campaign. I'm not sure how good they are doing, but my feeling is they are uh, not the first choice for the campaign because they have uh, similar problems as uh, Kai. Uh, I think Lars Storm has no effect on bosses, for instance. So, but in Arena they are uh, they are really good, and if uh, I were to go for a line with them, I would add Jorgen. And as a tank, I would go for Aurora. Why I take Aurora, you can check this out in my my video synergies synergy in Hero Wars teams. I also give you the link in the description. And uh, in the last position here, I would go for Helios because his skills also depend on magic attack, and we have a very a very magical line here. Some guys they play without uh, a tank. They go, they tank with Krista, and then yeah, one can add one more guy. Some guys add uh, Dorian here, makes the line very stable. Uh, me, I would prefer to add Faceless there, make the line a bit more aggressive. And then one player um, added here Orion, which can be risky, because I managed to beat the line with the Twins and Orion with the team only half the power of this line. I also give you the link of this battle in the description. Yeah, then one word to Kira. Um, quite some heroes, they got some up, they got upgraded, they got uh, made better by the, by the programmers, and Kira is one of those heroes. And now actually I think she is uh, kind of number two when it comes to physical attacking. I still think Kark is the best overall physical attacker. But then on uh, rank 2, I would say uh, I would put Kira. She has a tremendous armor penetration and a very nice first skill. Um, what's it called again? Uh, Blade Whirlwind. Yeah, this is uh, really nice to watch. And yeah, she's doing a lot of damage. Um, so one guy was asking me, is she any good going for? And yeah, I would say definitely. I think it's a lot of fun leveling her up and I also think she's very good. So when I would go for her, I would add Nebula and Fox gives additional armor penetration. So we have the three ladies, maybe as a tank go for Galahad. He also was the, had an upgrade and now is producing uh, even more damage than he did before. And yeah, in last position, mm, always the first choice. I think you can guess it's Chet. I would go for Chet. So this would be a very nice line too, I think. There are many possibilities, but just uh, in this video I give I gave you the the, the team for for the campaign, and uh, with uh, these guys I recommend you will be able to finish the campaign with lines uh, below 400 kilo. So yeah. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you still enjoy the game. Uh, when you have a question, you can ask in the comments or you can ask your question in uh, one of the Facebook groups. I will give you the link to that also. So, see you soon. See you in Dominion. Have fun. Bye bye.